it's more compact, it's more rugged, and it flies faster, farther, longer, and carries more than a comparable multi-rotor system. And that's inherent to the coaxial design. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 298. Can a coaxial drone deliver exceptional service and performance? For that question, we head to Massachusetts to speak with Peter Fuchs, CEO and co-founder of Ascent Aerosystems. Ascent Aerosystems designs and manufactures unique coaxial drones that are more portable and durable than conventional multi-rotors. The rugged cylinder-shaped vehicles scale to any size and are ideal for industrial, public safety, and military markets, where mission-critical operations in tough environments are the norm. A lifelong enthusiast of anything related to aviation, Peter began his career as a professional pilot. And since leaving the flight deck, his experience includes roles in finance, operations, management consulting, mergers and acquisitions, and corporate strategy. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Peter talks about Ascent Aerosystems, the company's new Spirit coaxial drone, and how it offers an alternative to mission-critical UAS operations. But before we hear from Peter, I want to thank those of you who are supporting my funding campaign. Whether it's a dollar, $100, or much more, you can help defray the cost of production and keep the podcast going and growing. Go to DroneRadioShow.com slash donate. And by the way, if you have an idea for a great show and want to share your experience, please contact me at Randy at DroneRadioShow.com. So let's learn how a coaxial drone can deliver mission-critical operations with Peter Futes of Ascent Aerosystems. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Peter to introduce himself. My name is Peter Fuchs, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ascent Aerosystems. Uh, we're based near Boston, Massachusetts, and we design and manufacture compact, all-weather, high-performance coaxial unmanned aerial systems. Peter, tell us about Ascent Aerosystems. Ascent Aerosystems was founded back in 2014, and we actually were one of the original Kickstarter drone campaigns in 2015. We survived the shakeout of the 2016-2017 consumer drone industry, kept our heads down, and ultimately left the consumer market to focus on defense and public safety. And today, we're the only manufacturer of civil and military coaxial UAVs in the world. And you're an American manufacturer, is that correct? That's right. Yeah, we're all American. Well, it's got to be a challenge for an American drone manufacturer considering the dominance of DJI. What makes Ascent Aerosystem stand out? You know, not only the fact that we're the only manufacturer of the coax still really in the world, um, we're focused entirely on the airframe. So when you think about the drone value chain and ultimately who's paying for the products and the services which we offer, all they really care about is, you know, moving things from A to B and collecting data. And so most of the drone companies out there are essentially trying to solve one of those issues. We look at the drone value chain and say, you know what, the airframe itself is actually an underserved segment of the market. And we think the coaxial can actually provide a better solution for the platform that has to be airborne. And so that's where we're focused. What's the difference between a coaxial drone and others on the market? So to start, a traditional conventional multi-rotor, of course, is kind of a spidery looking thing with four, six, maybe eight rotors out on arms with a central sort of pod. A coaxial is a cylinder, and it's got two rotors that are both mounted on the same axis in the middle of that cylinder, and they spin in opposite directions, and they provide the lift and the control. So it's a much simpler form factor. Are the propellers collapsible? So ours will fold up against the side of the vehicle. That makes it much more compact and easy to store and to launch. How long is the cylinder? And does it come in different sizes? 
We've made a number of different sizes over the years. The Spirit that we offer today is about the size of a coffee can. Uh, that's the core of the vehicle. We can probably dig into that a little bit further in a sec. But the physics of the coaxial actually scale really well. We've made really small vehicles about the size of a soda can. And our largest one is actually over about 25 pounds. Um, and that would be about the size of a large like fire extinguisher. So why build a coaxial drone? Setting aside the consumer market for a second, there are a lot of mission critical applications where the UAV can really play an important role. But operators need to be able to fly whenever and wherever they're needed, right? The reality today is they often can't. Let's start with the environment. Most drones today can't fly in the rain. Half to as many as three quarters of the days that they might need to fly are restricted at some point because of precipitation. They also can't fly in high wind. 15, 20 mile an hour top speed limit for a lot of drones. This means that the operators can't actually fly when they're needed. Now, if you think about mission critical operations, right? Soldiers, public safety agencies, critical industry, you gotta be able to fly when and where you're needed, not just when the weather's good or where it's convenient. The aircraft themselves are also aren't that well suited for that kind of mission. They're fragile. They've got arms with rotors that stick off and you know wings that can be easily broken. So to protect and transport them, they're kept in these large cases and boxes that are, that are big and bulky and they're hard to bring where they're needed. It's from that perspective then that we arrived at the coaxial as the best form. Now, coaxials have really been around for decades on full-scale helicopters, but they're really difficult to actually engineer at this much smaller scale. Tell us more about the actual design of the drone and how that equates to performance. As a coaxial drone, we've stripped out all the extra parts of the airframe and provided essentially a much larger envelope of payload and battery. And because we have that, we have much higher performance than any comparable multi-rotor. It's more compact, it's more rugged, and it flies faster, farther, longer, and carries more than a comparable multi-rotor system. And that's inherent to the coaxial design. Will coaxial drones eventually replace multi-rotors? You know, the reality is that for the most part, quadcopters and multi-rotors are really good platforms and do a great job of providing an airborne platform at really low cost. All the parts are relatively inexpensive and you know the technology that's needed to get them to fly reliably is, is pretty good and it's pretty inexpensive. The reality is when you're looking for a more compact, more rugged, higher performance option, it's really difficult to bring all of those things together in a multi-rotor. If you want it to be stronger, it's going to be heavier. If you want to make it more environmentally protected, it's going to be heavier. So all of those things make the quadcopter really good for a lot of applications, but not so great for those things where those rugged, compact features are really important. Who are the most likely users of the drone? Well, when you think about the target market, right, we think about mission critical applications within public safety, the military, and critical industries. So things like infrastructure and utilities, inspection and security, insurance, mining, EMS, of course, and disaster response, fire services, law enforcement, environmental and conservation, and then all the service branches, of course. If you need to fly and you can't pick and choose, you want to have a rugged, compact design, and the coaxial provides that. You mentioned that it's rugged. But what does that actually mean? You know, being a cylinder, right? Cylinders are inherently simple geometric shapes, and they can actually absorb a lot of impact without adding a lot of weight. The actual core of the vehicle is about four pounds, about the size of a large coffee can. And then we add extensions onto that, the batteries and the payloads and that sort of thing. Being a cylinder, it's also really easy to seal against the environment. You can use simple O-rings and things like that. And so it has an IP rating of 5.6, which means essentially you can fly it in heavy rain, precipitation, salt spray, anything except, you know, putting it underwater. Uh, you can fly in sand and, you know, that sort of thing. You can hose it off if you need to once you're done. And we've got a whole procedure on how to keep it clean, but there's really no limitation. It can absorb, you know, harsh handling too, you know, rolls off of a table onto the ground. It, you know, it isn't going to break the vehicle if it falls off the back of a truck. So it's a really, you know, rugged design that's for the most part only limited by the strength of the sensors that are attached. 
Where are the sensors located? If you think about the core as the center of the vehicle, it's got identical fittings on the top and on the bottom. And using a quick connect twisting mechanism, you can attach sensors or payloads or batteries on the top, the bottom, or both. And each side has identical pass-throughs for power and data. So if you were to put a sensor on the top and the bottom, they could talk to each other and the autopilot in the middle. So it's essentially transparent to the vehicle itself. So you can focus on the mission. Is the Spirit available today? Yeah, the Spirit is available right now. We have some available for shipment within the next uh, like 30 days or so. It represents our third generation vehicle, and it really culminates everything that we've ever learned about coaxials over the years. We designed it to be sort of a utility platform, so operators can experiment with their own payloads, or they can purchase a turnkey system from us, which includes a selection of a lot of different cameras and IR sensors and that sort of thing. Do you manufacture other models in addition to the Spirit? We do make larger vehicles for other customers, and the physics of the coaxial scale really well, so we can actually make them smaller and larger without a whole lot of effort. But right now, on sort of a quick turn, quick order, the Spirit is our current product. How much does the Spirit weigh? So the core weighs uh, four pounds, and the maximum weight of the aircraft is 14 pounds, which means it leaves 10 pounds available for batteries and payloads. So you can mix and match what you need depending on the mission that you're flying. If you want to fly, for example, a heavy payload, you can put on one battery and have almost six pounds available to fly. If you need to fly long endurance, you would put on two batteries, fly for almost an hour, maybe even over an hour, depending, and still have about a pound and a half for your payload. For public safety applications, what is the Spirit's best selling point? Well, again, because public safety operators often can't pick and choose when they fly, they're going to be able to fly this in just about any weather. With a typical camera, you know, they can have a drone, not unlike others that they have today, but they aren't restricted, you know, because of rain or wind or that sort of thing. Where did the idea for a coaxial drone come from? Coaxials have been around for decades. Full-scale helicopters like like Sikorsky, uh, Kamov, those have been around since the 50s. They're harder to actually engineer. My co-founders and partners, John and Nate Merringer, they were avid mountaineers and rock climbers, you know, back in the 2010, 2012 timeframe. And in the course of their sort of treks and adventures in the Arizona outback, they discovered the need for an airborne, you know, perspective. Being aeronautical engineers, but not drone enthusiasts, they designed a solution from a clean sheet of paper, and that was the coaxial. And they actually put that up on a drone, you know, website, like a hobbyist site where I came across them. And I brought kind of a longer career of of aviation and, you know, business. And so we decided after a few months of, you know, communication that we should, you know, work together. And that's how the company got started. But it was always about coaxials from the very beginning. So when you learned about the drone, what was it that intrigued you enough to build a company around it? So my first career was actually as a professional pilot. And I've been kind of a radio control airplane nerd and helicopter nerd since I was like eight years old. I learned to fly in some of the earliest RC helicopters back in the, uh, the early and mid 80s. So I've always been you know, drawn to this uh, stuff. And when I saw the coaxial that they had come up with, I just knew that the efficiencies and the capabilities that it provided represented really a different sort of approach to the compromises that aircraft always have to balance. Everything in an aircraft is a compromise. If you want to go fast, you're going to need a long runway because your wings are going to be small. If you want to fly a long time, then then you're going to have to give up speed. So there's a lot of trade-offs. And the coaxial just does a marvelous job of really squeezing performance out of the vehicle by minimizing the airframe size. With everything that our troops in the field have to transport... How easy would it be for them to carry the Spirit drone? Troops in the field are absolutely critically concerned about the stuff that they're carrying. I mean, I think they're like carrying between 30 and 40 pounds, even without a drone. Whether it's water or gear, it's a critical concern. So a small drone like this can actually provide a tremendous advantage because if you think about what the alternatives are for something that can carry the kind of weight that this can and fly for the length that it can and the speed that it can and the range that it can, it's a pretty small unit. You can fit two spirits, two batteries, two sensors, and a controller in a pretty small backpack. Or if you just need one, it's not going to take up a lot of room. 
we are working with with all the branches of the military and they see the utility not only for a platform like this on the ground, but the cylinder also provides um, a lot of advantages in the storage and the transport. You can fit a lot of drones in a very small space. It's been launched from a vehicle at over 50 miles an hour. We've launched them from the air. So there's entirely new types of concepts of operation that a coaxial like the Spirit or other versions of it can open up. Is there anything that we miss that we should talk about? We work with those companies out there that are looking to perfect really great technologies, great sensors, great algorithms that do processing and things like that, where if they're designing their own aircraft or if they're using a compromised aircraft for their platform, uh, we would love to talk to them because we actually provide a hardware kit and we make it really easy to use a better platform to bring their technology to the market. I saw something on the website about a platform kit. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, we call it a payload development kit, and it's simply a hardware kit which attaches onto the top or to the bottom of the Spirit and provides all the connections that you need to access the autopilot, power, high-speed data buses, and things like that. So if you're working, for example, on a really great LiDAR sensor, you can attach it to the Spirit, and we give you everything that you need to do that, including like the, the software and the technical information that you need. Peter, I'd like to shift gears and talk about the company. First of all, is this your first startup or have you done this before? No, this is my first uh, startup. You know, it's, it's interesting. It, like I mentioned earlier, my first career is as a professional pilot. And in many ways, this brings together everything I've ever done in my career. As a professional pilot, I knew all about aircraft and, you know, the regulations. I then left flying in 2001 and transitioned into a strategy and business career. I learned about finance and strategy and product development and management and that sort of thing. So for the last uh, six years, what started as a part-time thing while my kids were in high school and ultimately in college, I was able to sort of transition into a full-time role over the last two years or so. And it's a thrill. What's the greatest challenge that you had to overcome in building the company? Well, it's funny because, you know, people say, you know, startups are hard. They are. Hardware startups are even harder because there's a lot to get right. And focus is really important. And we've stayed focused. And in many ways, that's been really hard. But so far, so good. What have you enjoyed most about this experience? Uh, The people. Really, the people that I'm working with. My partners, John and Nate, are just fantastic people to work with. We're building a team that I couldn't be more proud of. And uh, we've got great partners, great customers. And it's just really been a thrill finding the solutions that everybody needs for their own particular roles in this sort of ecosystem. And that's just been the most fun. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs? Do a lot of homework (laughs) about what it's actually like to start a company. Talk to other founders. Understand that you're trying to create something where nothing exists and there is no playbook. There is no script. You're not going to get everything right. You're trying to create something new every day. And that takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of humility. And it also takes the right people. So find the right people and also really figure out what you care about. Uh, Because if you're going to be successful, it's going to be a long haul. And uh, you need to be trying to solve a problem that not only you care about, but other people care about too. And for my final question, Peter, what message would you like to leave regarding the future of the drone industry? As we sit here in 2020, a lot of us who've been in the business since the beginning, or at least for the last six or seven years or so, might think that we're far into the evolution of this industry. And what I would say is that uh, we're still at the very, very, very early stages There's so much more that's evolving. There's so much that's happening that I think we're going to look back seven years from now and think how quaint almost these times were. We're at the beginning and anybody who's thinking about getting into this space in really any capacity across the value chain, there's tons of opportunity. It's not easy, but there's tons of opportunity. That's it for episode 298 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Peter Fuchs of Ascent Aerosystems. I want to thank Peter for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Ascent Aerosystems or want to connect with Peter, check out the webpage at ascentaerosystems.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, 
But for as little as $1, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.